the ex actual exchange take place, the actual exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide take place. And yes, alveoli is one of the primary sites where gaseous exchange occurs. So we will talk about the mechanisms which uh, helps in this process of exchange of gases. So now the question is, where does exchange of gases occur? Now whenever I say gases, I actually mean oxygen and carbon dioxide. Now still now we talked about breathing. So we saw how oxygen rich air enters our body and it reaches still alveoli. And how carbon dioxide rich air comes out from alveoli to outside. So we have just covered that part. Now the question is how the carbon dioxide comes to alveoli and how oxygen moves from alveoli to different cells of the body. So what interesting happens at the alveoli? That is what we will see now. So the exchange of gases occurs across alveoli and it also occurs between the blood and the tissues. Now here where, where the alveoli is there, so this is the structure of alveoli. Uh, closed in structure. So here you can actually see the blood vessels. They are closely located to the alveoli. So exchange occurs between alveoli and the blood vessels. Now blood carries the gases to different parts of the body and again exchange occurs between the blood and the tissues. So these are the two sites where exchange of gases occur during the process of respiration. So exactly what happens so exactly what happens is something like this. Let us suppose this is oxygen. Now let us suppose this is my alveoli. This is alveoli and this is the alveolar membrane, membrane of the alveoli. Now oxygen rich air has entered through the nostrils and it has reached the alveoli. So this air is rich in oxygen. Okay. And now from here, the oxygen will be given out and it will reach the blood vessels. So let us say it reaches the blood vessels. So I am just writing it as blood. So oxygen comes to blood. Now what does blood do? Blood takes this oxygen since blood has the ability to travel throughout the body. So these blood vessels will carry the oxygen and supply it to different tissues of the body. Now inside these tissues there are cells which are undergoing cellular respiration and as a result of which carbon dioxide is produced as a byproduct. So they want to get rid of this carbon dioxide so they give this carbon dioxide to the blood. The blood vessels again carry the carbon dioxide and then the blood vessels actually supply the carbon dioxide to the alveoli. So what is happening? Exchange of gases take place between alveoli and the blood vessels. So that is one exchange which is taking place. Again exchange is taking place between the blood vessels and the tissues. So these are the two sites where exchange of gases will occur. So now we will look at the mechanism behind the exchange of gases. How this exchange take place? Why oxygen moves from alveoli to blood vessels and why carbon dioxide moves from blood vessels to alveoli? Similarly, why oxygen moves from blood vessels to tissues and why carbon dioxide moves from tissues to blood vessels? So we will try to understand that concept in this topic. So now let us look at the mechanism which actually help in the exchange of gases or what helps oxygen or carbon dioxide to move from one region to another. Exchange of gases occur by simple diffusion. Now we all know what is simple diffusion. Diffusion is nothing but the process by which substances move along a concentration gradient. That is substances move from a region of high concentration towards a region of low concentration. So that is diffusion. So that means carbon dioxide and uh, oxygen, they move from a region of higher concentration towards a region of lower concentration. So when I say a gradient, what sort of gradient do they follow? So based on what gradient? So the gradient which is followed here is actually the pressure gradient. So the gradient here is the pressure gradient. So that means oxygen and carbon dioxide moves from a region of higher pressure towards a region of lower pressure. 
Now the question is how do we know what is the pressure contributed by a particular gas for example what is the pressure contributed by oxygen in in the air because air is a mixture of gases so there are many other gases present in the air so how do we know how much pressure is contributed by oxygen similarly how do we know how much pressure is contributed by carbon dioxide so in order to know that we will discuss a topic on partial pressure so there we will get to know how much pressure is contributed by a particular gas and based on that these gases will move from a region of higher pressure towards a region of lower pressure. Now what are the factors that affect the rate of diffusion? One is the concentration gradient that is the difference in pressures of the two regions. The next is the thickness of the membrane. Now whenever diffusion occurs it occurs across a membrane. For example, when the movement of oxygen happens from alveoli to the blood vessels, so it happens across the alveolar membrane. So how thick the membrane is, that also de determines how what will be the rate of diffusion. Now if the membrane is very thick, then the rate of diffusion will be lesser. But if the membrane is very thin, it will be very easy to pass across it and therefore the rate of diffusion will be more. Again, solubility of gases like the solubility of carbon dioxide or oxygen also plays an important role in the rate of diffusion. So these are some of the factors. Now, before we discuss how these factors influence the rate of diffusion, we should first understand the concept of partial pressure so that we will know that how simple diffusion occurs for these gases. So let us understand the concept of partial pressure. So partial pressure is the pressure contributed by an individual gas in a mixture of gases. Let us suppose, let us, the best example that I can take is air. Now air is not one particular gas. Air has a mixture of gases. It has nitrogen, it has oxygen, it has carbon dioxide. So it has argon, it has helium. There are so many gases present in air. Now if I want to know what is the pressure contributed by carbon dioxide or what is the pressure contributed by oxygen how do we know so that is defined as partial pressure the pressure contributed by oxygen in a mixture of gases so if the total pressure of the air is capital p then the partial pressure contributed by nitrogen is denoted by small p nitrogen partial pressure denoted uh, contributed by oxygen is po2 partial pressure contributed by carbon dioxide is pco2 and this total p that is the total pressure of the gas is equal to sum of the partial pressure of all the constituent gases so that is the concept of partial pressure so now this the unit for measuring partial pressure is same as pressure and it is generally expressed as a millimeter of mercury column. That's because pressure is commonly measured by its capacity to displace a column of liquid in a manometer, right? Manometer is the instrument where you have a liquid and how, what, how much ever height it rises in the mercury column. So pressure is denoted in terms of that. Therefore, it is expressed as the height of the fluid. So, it, we express it as millimeter of mercury, which shows the column of mercury. So, we can say that, so we can say that capital P is equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3 and so on. So, where P is the total pressure of a mixture of gases, P1 is the partial pressure due to 1 that is a particular gas 1 similarly p2 is the partial pressure due to a particular gas 2 and so on so now here in this lesson we are only bothered about oxygen and carbon dioxide so we will denote partial pressure of oxygen as po2 and partial pressure of carbon dioxide as PCO2. Now these two values will actually determine how diffusion will take place. So diffusion will always take place from a region where PO2 is higher towards a region where PO2 is lower. Similarly, diffusion of carbon dioxide will take place from a region with higher PCO2 towards a region with lower.